how you know that you're in a style rut. First, it's the clothes. Boring, frumpy, random. If you're at home, it's giant sweaters, old hoodies. If you're in an office, it's repetitive neutrals that don't show anything about you. Second, it's the longing. <laughs> you want to dress better, you like beautiful things, you're spending lots of time scrolling through these gorgeous photos of people's outfits, putting together like these fantasy boards on Pinterest, loading up the online shopping cart. But third, it's the frustration, it's the stuckness. It's like you know it could be better, if you looked better you would feel happier, you feel how the clothes are draining your confidence day by day, but you're just stuck in this pattern, in these style habits, and you know when that new day comes you're just back putting on that old hoodie again. Hi, I'm back from my kind of dimly lit San Diego apartment and today I'm talking about the style rut and how to escape it. If you're in the style rut, you should really know this is a huge struggle. People constantly ask me about it's one of the top things. So you're really not alone in it. It's just a tricky thing to navigate. But the great news is the solution, honestly, is pretty simple and straightforward. If you just follow the steps in this video, you will be back in like the full bloom of your beauty in no time. But first I have to explain to you why you end up, like why most style advice actually harms your ability to get out of the style rut doesn't really help you, kind of keeps you stuck. Because you've probably tried to escape the style rut by watching style videos, reading blogs, you know, social media, information is power, so obviously it feels like a good idea to learn more. But the problem is that a lot of the style advice you're learning is just really complicated. It's usually a multi-step process where you set up a Pinterest board, you're going to take a bunch of photos, you're going to figure out your body type, the colors, inspiration, aesthetic, put it all into these outfits, clear out your closet, you know, all the style advice. It's so valuable, right? All of these things obviously help you on this style journey, but this info does not help you get unstuck. It doesn't help you with the style rut. You could spend hours and hours reading these things and still be going back to that one pair of yoga pants and that one jacket that you own. Why doesn't it help? Because this approach does not acknowledge the actual struggle you're facing. Like you might be lacking some style knowledge. Maybe you don't know how to perfectly put outfits together, you know, like you could use some clarity on your style goals or a name for your aesthetic, but it's not the actual problem. The actual reason you're in the style rut, the much bigger struggle you're facing is simply overwhelm. Because if we go back to the problem of the style rut, think about when it started. There's usually some big external change that triggers the style rut. That's like a life change, body change, environmental change. You got kids, you started working from home, you moved to a totally new area. So this big thing happens, and as a result, you lose access to maybe your previous wardrobe or your wardrobe routines, and then you never get new wardrobe, new routines, because life is just busy and stressful. You don't have the time, the energy, the resources to figure out the new style. So even if like now life has gotten easier and you're ready to improve your style, even if you're ready and you have more resources, it still feels like an enormous project because you know it's going to take lots of time and money and, you know, taking the pictures, buying the stuff, sending it back, trying it on, doing the research, all the shopping. It's like, it is just a lot. And if you're in the style rut due to overwhelm, uh, overwhelming yourself is not going to get you out, right? So gathering all this info and setting up a 20-step plan is just overwhelm. It's kind of like watering a plant that's already overwatered. Like, yes, water is essential for the plant's survival, but it's also going to choke on it. So yeah, you need some style info, but you might be choking on it. Uh, and now that you understand the problem, the overwhelm is at the root of the style rut, you already have your hint about the solution. And to figure out this, you know, the first step in the solution, we can use fitness as an analogy. It's a great analogy because, you know, if you want to get fit, it's so easy to fall also into a rabbit hole of info like, should I stretch before or after? You know, what type of supplements should I take? What's the perfect gym routine? All these new, like, ideas and questions emerge and it's so easy to get swallowed up in them. But really, for gym, all you need to do is just pick one type of activity you like and find a way to actually be consistent with it. And it's this really the same with your wardrobe. You don't need 
all the info, figure out all the details, you need to kind of get out there and start moving a bit. So the first thing you want to do is get one new thing that makes you feel pretty, alive, and something fun. And at this point, you might be like, Okay, Rita, I've tried getting some cool new things and they just sit there in the closet collecting dust while the sweatpants come on. So if this happened to you, you're not alone. It's very typical if you're trapped in the boring style to try to fix it by buying like a luxury handbag, sparkly boots, you know, like an elegant blouse. You're like, yeah, but the problem is that those things are not wearable for you right now because you're stuck in the style rut. And if you really think about it, how are you gonna like incorporate an elegant blouse if you're just wearing athleisure every day? When is that bag actually gonna come up? So we're gonna save these more extravagant experiments for later. Right now with this new one thing you wanna buy, it should be new and exciting, but it should be usable. So the rule is that you want something you can wear all the time in the upcoming weeks. You want a new thing you could use two, three, like four days a week. So what would that be for you? I want you to start thinking about the specific types of items which you could easily incorporate into your daily wardrobe. So if you're cold all the time and you want to move around really easily, how about just a really big sweater in a bold lime green color? Or if you're outside all the time, maybe you get a new hat with like a beautiful pattern or a pom-pom. If you're a busy mom on the go, maybe you get a new big like tote bag that's not a neutral shade. Or if you're like in gym clothes all the time, maybe a new gym clothes that feel like really special. These are all just quick examples of items that fit this criteria of being new and exciting but also really usable. I know that a lot of people really like to start with a fresh new color. I mean, colors are literally light waves, right? So bringing in new colors, like bringing a new wavelength of energy into your life, I think it can be really great. Because in my item, I remember like what really helped me with my style rut way back in 2018, it really lost my way. I was just having a very tough time. And my exit item was this big pink fuzzy sweater I bought from H&M. And I wore it for months and I wore it like at least twice a week. It really wasn't the right color pink for my complexion, honestly. It wasn't the best shape for my body. But that's not what mattered to me then. I wouldn't change that now. Because before the sweater, I'd mostly been wearing black, you know, dark blue or white. And I was just wearing kind of like tailored minimal blazers. Everything very just quiet. And there was this big pink fuzzy sweater and I couldn't hide right because whenever I went anywhere people noticed it just because of the color and it was very friendly it was very radiant and it really helped me get comfortable with being seen after being invisible for so long and I wouldn't have been able to make that style transition and kind of rediscover my style magic if I had not been wearing it all the time if it was like a special occasion sweater but because it became the staple of my everyday and became this part of the way I saw myself, it really helped me transition. So that's why I really advise you also to find a piece that's not just like a special occasion item, but something that becomes like part of you and your style. Okay, but of course, like even if you find this big pink fuzzy sweater, you're not satisfied there, that's just the first step. The problem here is that at this first step, it's really easy to get carried away you might be like, oh yeah, I've discovered that I love bright colors and I love this and that and I blah 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 and I start planning my wardrobe and we're right back in the overwhelm. So you want to think back to the training metaphor. It's like you found an exercise you enjoy, you've been consistent with it for a couple of weeks, it doesn't mean that it's time to double your training now, right? It's not time to go twice as hard. At this point, you just want to slowly and gently increase your capacity and as in fitness so in fashion i want to help you increase your style capacity this is like such a good concept right you want to create more time and energy in your personal like time and energy budget to actually work on your style right you're not about adding just tons of new things but adding new style habits this focus just helps you find that room in your schedule and also reminds you just how nice it is to take care of yourself so for the first week you could try adding a small maintenance step like you could choose shoes that always match your socks or you match your socks to your scrunchie or you choose a special hair clip every day or you just fill in just your eyebrows again it just should be something small that reminds you that it's fun to take care of yourself, that it feels good. 
you know and in the second week for the weeks you just want to keep adding these small style habits so maybe you find a couple of hours to get your nails done maybe you have a rule that after the workout you always change out of your gym clothes maybe you're gonna start doing three makeup steps in the morning rather than just one so you're really building up this capacity and within the first month of building up this capacity you can start just focusing on areas that are easy and important and also improving we have available right so you can put away the t-shirts that make you the saddest you know you could just make just a bit of energy for that or you can make one day a week a dress up day so even if you're whatever you're doing that day is just a day when you're a bit dressier and you just keep wearing that new cool thing you like and you keep finding those small moments to do something special for yourself right so you just Pick a thing that feels good and then just do that thing. And it's so funny because like if you're watching this video and you're like, Rino, this is obvious. It, it is obvious, but the tricky part is actually picking these manageable things and sticking with it and not pushing ourselves into this overwhelm that leads back to the collapse. <laughs> you know, like not going too far. And uh, once you do feel like you're having your magic back, my favorite advice is to create like one new outfit you know what it's been like a month or so that feels like you know the new you something really usable right now for today but that kind of celebrates you and give yourself the permission like do you need new shoes do you need a new bag just let yourself celebrate who you are right now and design like this one outfit to enjoy this isn't the time to figure out your aesthetic it's not the time to make lifelong decisions but it's just one outfit to welcome you back from the void kind of and to reclaim your power and beauty once you've kind of broken out of your shell and built up on those style habits. Finally, like a natural part of the process is obviously decluttering your closet. Most of us do have just too much stuff in there. These things are like hanging there, obscuring your vision, making you feel bad for not fitting into them or wearing them or whatever. But I do find that closet cleaning can be really stressful. So I have a video where I talk about closet cleaning strategies for each quadrant so I think that you can find that really helpful because it just encourages you to go kind of slow and to focus on a few things at a time uh, but see you next time bye